Welcome. This video is going to take a look at boiling point elevation and freezing point depression, which are both colligative properties. And these are two colligative properties where we often want to actually calculate how big is that effect of um, either elevating the boiling point or lowering the freezing point. And so to do that, you need to know several things. First of all, you need to know the molality, which is the moles per kilogram. And that just makes sense because that lets you know how much of your solute is in the solvent. So how concentrated is it? More concentrated is going to have a bigger effect. And then you also need to know if the solute is ionic or covalent because that's going to affect how many particles ultimately end up dissolved in the solvent. And you also need to know the identity of the solvent because different solvents are affected differently. So the basic equation looks very similar for both um, change in boiling point and change in freezing point. Now, a couple things that's important to note is this delta T, that means the change. That's not your new boiling point. That's how much the old boiling point is going to increase. And same with delta TF, this is how much your freezing point is going to decrease, but it's not the new freezing point. KB and KF, as it says down here, are constants. That's based on what the solvent is. So KB and KF, you look up according to your solvent, and you can find these charts anywhere online. Or your Glencoe textbook happens to have them on page 500 and 502. And then M is the molality, which may be given to you or you may have to calculate, just like molarity. And then I is how many particles it's ultimately going to end up in when it dissolves. And if it's covalent, that's just one. Or in other words, you can ignore I. But if it's an ionic solution, then you need to find out, does it fall apart just into two ions, one positive, one negative? Or is there more than two? But it'll be a minimum of two if you have an ionic compound. Looking at this example, we see it says calculate the freezing point and the boiling point of a solution with a molality of 1.55 moles per kilogram. If the solute is non-volatile and non-electrolyte, you'll often see that given with an, uh, an example or with a problem you're supposed to do. That's just letting you know that this is a covalent solute that is going to have an effect. So non-electrolytes, your hint that it's covalent. Non-volatile, they often throw that in just to let you know that it's not a gas that's going to escape easily and have no effect on the solvent. And then you're given the identity of the solvent, which is benzene. So again, it's important to note you're being asked to calculate the new freezing point and the new boiling point. So our equation actually calculates... If I do freezing point first, it's going to um, calculate the change in freezing point, but then I need to go ahead and um, calculate the new freezing point once I know what the change is going to be. So remember my equation says Kf, put that constant up, times molality times I. So when I look up the Kf for benzene, I find a value of 5.12. And it has the unit degrees Celsius per M. And that's because I'm going to plug in molality, which is 1.55. And moles per kilogram can also be abbreviated little m. So now those units are going to cancel out. And then I, in this case, is just 1 since it's covalent. And there is no unit because that's a counting number. So now when I take 5.12 times 1.55, I get a change in freezing point of 7.94 degrees Celsius. But I'm not done because now I have to calculate the new freezing point. So my original freezing point is 5.5. And since I just have two sig figs, I will round this to just 7.9. And you notice I subtract the change because freezing point goes lower. It gets depressed. So when I do this, I come up with a new freezing point of minus 2.4. So without the solute in there, without this strength and amount of solute in there, benzene would freeze at 5.55, but now you've depressed or pushed the freezing point down to minus 2.4, which is exactly what we do by putting salt on the roads. We make it harder for water to freeze, easier for it to melt as far as at a lower temperature, and so it makes our roads a little safer to drive on. So boiling points can be very similar. The equation looks virtually the same, except now we're looking up constants for boiling point. And when I look up Kb for benzene, it is 2.53. 
and against degrees Celsius per m. My molality is the same, 1.55, and my I value is the same. So now when I take 2.53 times 1.55, I come up with a value of 3.92 degrees Celsius. And again, I have to calculate the new boiling point by finding the original boiling point, which is listed as 80.1 on my chart. And now I add my change, and again, I'll round that to just two sig figs, the 3.9. So this is now going to have a new boiling point of 84 degrees. Here's a little tougher example because in this example, we're again asked to find the freezing point and boiling point of a solution, and we're given both the solute and solvent's identity, but we're not given the molality directly. We're told it's 23.7 grams of copper 2 sulfate dissolved in 450 milliliters of water. So I need to use these two numbers to calculate a molality, and remember little m needs to be in moles per kilogram. So my first challenge is to take this 23.7 grams copper 2 sulfate, look up your oxidation numbers, and you'll see they combine 1 to 1 for CuSO4. So this is a plus 2, and this is a minus 2 charge on it. So then if I change that to moles, I have to come up with a molar mass for copper sulfate. So with one copper, one sulfur, and four oxygen, I'm coming up with a mass of 159.62. So that means I've got 159.62. I've got 0.148 moles of the copper sulfate. The 450 milliliters of water, remember one liter, is a thousand milliliters, so this is really 0 0.450 liters of water. And just like um, water has a density of one gram per milliliter, that also translates to one kilogram per one liter because you increase the mass by a thousand, you increase the volume by a thousand. So this I can just change to 0.45 kilograms. So now little m is going to be. 0.148 divided by the 0 0.450, which gives me a molality of 0.33 little m. So if I start with my freezing point first, I need to know some values for water since water is my solvent. So my change in freezing point, the Kf for water is 1.86. My molality is 0.33. And my copper sulfate, since it's CuSO4, remember SO4 is all one ion. It's a polyatomic ion. So I is just 2 here. So when I plug and chug, 186 times 0.33 times 2, I'm coming up with a change in freezing point of 1.06. So with water, my new freezing point, water normally freezes at 0 degrees Celsius, minus 1.06. That means my new freezing point is minus 1.06 degrees Celsius. So not a big change, but it's not, I don't have a very high molality there. If I do the same thing for boiling point, delta Tb, now when I find the KB for water, it's 0.512. My molality is still 0.33. Still have two ions. So 0.512 times 0.33 times 2 gives me 0.34 degrees Celsius. So not much of a change. And my new boiling point is going to be my old boiling point plus the new, and you get a very small effect, 100.34 degrees Celsius. So here's one for you to try. I encourage you to pause this and try it on your own, and then go ahead and check out my solution. So non-volatile, non-electrolytes, letting me know I is going to be 1. Aqueous just means it's water. 
So it doesn't appear that they've told me my solvent, but in fact, they have given me the solvent here with the term aqueous. So delta Tf, my change in freezing point, is going to be 1.86 times the molality of 6.25. And this is just one since it's a non-electrolyte. So 1.86 times 6.25. This is a change of 11.6 degrees Celsius. So now my new freezing point, 0 minus 11.6 is going to be a new freezing point of 11.6 degrees Celsius. So think about zero degrees versus minus 12, this is Celsius. That's a pretty good temperature change um, in the winter. Delta Tb, this is important in your radiator in the summer that you don't have the water boiling away in your radiator at 100 degrees or your radiator is going to be dry very quickly. So we put antifreeze in there to push that boiling point up. So with water, remember the delta, the Kb for um, finding your boiling point change is 0.512. My molality is six, still 6.25, and I still just have one for my value. So now 5, 0.512 times 6.25 is a temperature change of 3.2 degrees Celsius. And remember, my original boiling point for water is 100. So when I add the 3.2 to it, it now will boil at 103.2 degrees Celsius. You've maybe noticed with the examples in this first exam, uh, this first try it here, that freezing point is affected more than boiling point when you look up your Kf and your Kb values. Kf is generally a bigger value than Kb for any solvent. Here's one more for you to try, and just like my second example, this one's going to require you to calculate the molality and then plug it into the equation. So go ahead and pause and see what you could do on this one. So as I look at it, I know my solvent is ethanol, so I need to look up the Kb and Kf values for ethanol. And then I have 105.4 grams of NaCl. So I need to find out how many moles that is. NaCl is pretty easy because there's just two things. There's uh, Na at 23 plus the Cl at 35.45. So this is a mass of 58.45 grams. So 105.4 divided by the 58.45, so around 2, 1.80 moles. And then it told me I just have 1 kilogram of solvent, so a little m... 1.80 moles divided by 1 kilogram means my molality is also 1.80. So my change in freezing point, since it's ethanol, I'm going to have a Kf of 1.99 times little m of 1.80. And NaCl, that's a metal and a non-metal, so it's going to have two ions forming. So my change in freezing point is going to be 7.16 degrees. And if I look at my original freezing point, ethanol, pure ethanol, will freeze at minus 114.1. And now I subtract the 7.2, I'll round to two sig figs. And suddenly my boiling point down is, or my freezing point is down to minus 121.3 degrees Celsius. Looking at boiling point, I need a Kb for ethanol. That's 1.22. M is still 1.8. I is still 2. So 1.22 times 1.8 times 2, I'm getting a change of 4.4 degrees Celsius. My original boiling point for ethanol was 78.5. It's elevated, so I add the 4.4, and I come up with a new boiling point of 82.9 degrees Celsius.